Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, we are going to be talking all things iPad mini 6. So if that is of interest to you, then please keep watching. So let's start with talking about accessories. So for my screen protector, which I am using, I am using a Bursum paper fill screen protector. You can also consider this to be a matte screen protector. So it has two roles. Not only is it protecting my iPad screen from all of the different elements and anything that can come its way. It also makes for a really, really pleasant writing experience. So you do not have to have a matte or paper-like screen protector, but trust me, writing on this paper-like screen protector is much better than writing on the regular iPad screen. I'm also using a ESR case and everything that I'm mentioning actually came from Amazon, so I have it linked down below. I just really love clear cases. I like how it allows me to really just appreciate this champagne color. I'm pretty sure it's called champagne and just really appreciate the iPad. I also really like the clear case because I sometimes will stick little decals and stickers and stuff inside of the case and then I can see through it so it's very versatile so instead of adding the stickers and the decals to the case on the back of the case which a lot of people will add stickers and things to their electronic devices I will add them just inside the case so that I can always just remove them if I want to and just appreciate the regular clear case and not ruin it so that is where this case came from I absolutely love it and then we have this moco pin case in this case or cover is actually protecting my second generation Apple pencil and so basically you just put your pencil inside of here and then you twist the cap on and essentially it makes for a really cool writing you have to do it normally. I find that I have to do this a couple of times to kind of get it doing right, but it just makes the pencil retractable, which I think is really cool. I obviously cannot charge my pencil with this case on, so I have to take this off probably every four days and I just attach it to my iPad mini and then I let it charge to 100 and then put it back in this case. And I really like it because I can clip it inside of my purse and all of that fun stuff. So that is the pencil and the cover that I'm using. So now let's move into talking about what is on my iPad and what apps and programs I have installed on my iPad. So first off, this is a widget, which we'll talk about widgets in a minute. This is Notion, which I use for planning. Good Notes, which I use for planning. I also use it for taking notes and for signing documents. This is Freeform, which I really don't use, but I'm trying to get into it. This is a shortcut to my digital planner in Good Notes. So these two pretty much serve the same purpose. This is for my photos. This is for my Google tasks. This is a widget. This is Canva, which I use to create all of my graphics, such as thumbnails. This is a widget. This is a widget. This is the Notes app. This is Amazon Music. Libby, which is a reading app. The Holy Bible, which technically is a reading app. The App Store, the Kindle widget, the Files app, and the Settings app. And then at the bottom, I have the Safari app, the Google Chrome app, and the Google Calendar app. So I just have one screen here, but I do have an app library, which everyone does, and all of my other apps are housed in my app library. That means that on my home screen, I just have these apps. But if I want to access any of my other apps, I will need to swipe right, or from the home screen here, I can pull down and search for it. So if I wanted to search for Widget Smith, I would just type in Widget Smith there. Or if I'm over here and I wanna search for Widget Smith, I can type it in, but I also see the icon right here, so I can just tap it. Okay, so let's talk about Widget Smith. You can download Widget Smith for free from the App Store. And what it allows you to do is create widgets for your home screen. So these are the small widgets that I've created. This area is for the medium widgets. This one is for the large widgets, and then this one is for the extra large. So the apps that I have created with Widgetsmith are the ones that you just saw in Widgetsmith. This one, which is small. This one, which is small. So if you go back to Widgetsmith, you'll see the two that I have created here. This is also one, but it's one that came standard with the Widgetsmith app. So it's basically one of these. It's not a real widget, it's just up here. It appears that it is, but it's not but these two are widgets. So this is small number two, and this is small number three. And if you click on it, it'll take you to the widget. And from here, all you have to do if you are wanting to add a photo as a widget is just come in here, tap photos, select one of your photos. Like let's say I wanted to make this a widget. Then I can tweak it from here. 
that's actually kind of cute and then I just press save and then if I go back to my home screen it'll automatically populate and that will be the widget all you have to do is long press on one of the apps until the shaky feature pops up then you press plus and if I want to add a widget smith widget I would come down here to widget smith and then I would select which one so because I have only small widgets I can only add small widgets so I would push add widget and then that widget automatically adds to the home screen and if I want to change it then I need to come in here long press press edit widget and if I want to change the widget I can come in here and I can select the one that I would like so I'm gonna do small number two widget which is gonna make it the same as the widget that's already on my screen and boom there is my widget so I'm just gonna delete this because I do not need it but that is how you add widgets so basically just download the app and create your widgets from inside of the widget smith app and then long press and go in and add the corresponding widget sizes to the screen for what you want so if i had created a large widget i would have added a large widget to my home screen okay so this is also a widget but this is the flip clock and i will have this link down below this is the flip clock and then i just added it as a widget to my home screen this is also a widget i have on here a motivation app and I set it up to where it will show me a new motivational quote each day. And I wanted the widget to be a large size or a medium size. I think this is medium. And so I just have it showing up as a medium widget. So that's kind of how that works. Like I mentioned, this is also a widget. So if you just come in here to the widgets, you'll see that there are so many that you can explore, but there's also a Kindle one. And then you can add either a small, or I'd say this is considered a medium widget to your home screen for easy access to your books. So if I just tap on this, it takes me to my current book, which is Glucose Revolution. I was recently reading on my phone. And so that's why it's asking me if I wanna go to the page that I was on last when I was using the Kindle app. So I selected yes. And so now I am where I need to be, which is hack number six, whatever chapter that is. And that is how that widget works. So now let's walk through some of the other apps. So let's go into Notion and we're gonna turn it sideways because Notion is actually better suited for the largest of the largest screens. So I really like using it on my desktop, but oftentimes I will access it on my little iPad here and it's so little and so cute. So this is my life planner. This is a Notion planner and I have a lot of information about my Notion planner I will have videos and everything linked because I have talked about a lot of this stuff before, but not in depth and not relating to how I use these different apps and tools on my iPad mini six. So this is the homepage of my life planner. Like I said, I don't have to necessarily take you on a tour, but for the most part, this is my notion. So I have my home screen, which is this one. I have April business, May business, May goals, May budget, social media, books and blogs, and then some master to-do lists. Once I am finishing reconciling the business budget for April, I will actually move this whole page to the archive. So everything that I've ever had before, all the other pages that I have gotten rid of, I have them in my archive here. So that is what happens there. I just move them to my archive if I'm not using them or if they are old essentially so I keep everything current and right here I have a place for May business and a page for May goals and the May budget which I referenced that section a whole ton social media books and blogs and so on and so forth like I mentioned I have master to-do list and so I won't take you on a full-on tour of my notion because I have done that many times before over the last year and some change or however long I've been using Notion. Have I been using it for a year? No, I think I started using it in October. So I've done a lot of those videos, so I won't do that today. But basically in the event that I want to plan anything or reference my Notion, I just access the Notion on my iPad. We're gonna skip GoodNotes because we're gonna save the best for last. That's the most commonly used app on this iPad. We're gonna go into Notes. And in my Notes section, I really don't have a whole ton. This is an example of one of the notes that I would write at work like an actual note I have a note a work note inside of the notes app I also have other notes but I really don't access them a whole lot if I'm on my iPad or in a pinch and I need to go ahead and access something from my notes section 
on my iPad mini, I will. But for the most part, I really don't do too much of using of the notes app on here. It's just here in the event that I need to. But I really like having the notes app on here because if you swipe up like such, you can make a quick note, which I love. And so that is really the main purpose that this notes app serves for me. So I can just make quick notes and it goes to the notes app. Again, you just swipe up from the right corner and boom, your note pops up and you can make a quick note of something if you need to. And you can do that from anywhere using the iPad. Next up we have Freeform. As I mentioned, I've been trying it out. It's not really doing anything for me. I've just been testing it out and this is literally all that I've done. I've just added a few things just to kind of test it out. It's not an app that I use regularly, but I am trying to mess with it. This is just a shortcut to the GoodNotes app. And if you come in here and you type in shorts or shortcuts, you can go into your shortcuts and make a bunch of different shortcuts. I have one that is here, which takes me to my 2023 planner, as I mentioned before. I feel like the photos app is pretty self-explanatory, but if it isn't, then there is the photos app. And I like having the photos app on my iPad because when I'm doing digital planning, creating mood boards or vision boards, I like referencing my photos section because all of the photos that I take on my iPhone actually pop up on my iPad and therefore it makes it very seamless to add in photos. Google Tasks is an app that I sometimes use. I kind of go back and forth with it. I don't use it a whole ton. This is my Sunday reset routine. Sometimes I like referencing my reset routine or some of the other routines that I have made in this app. But since I have been using Notion, I really don't use Google a whole ton anymore. I used to use the whole everything Google offered. Google Calendar, Tasks, and all of the other types of organizational tools that they offer, but I really don't use those anymore with the advent of Notion. This is Canva. As I mentioned, I even created this just today. So all of my graphics are in here. I don't do a lot of creating on Canva. If I can do it on a desktop computer to make it easier for me, I will. So a lot of things I do actually create on my desktop, but they do all pop up on my Canva on my iPad and that's also helpful if I want to just bring in something, if I wanna you know, add something in GoodNotes that I created in Canva, then it's really helpful to just download it from here. But this I actually made really quickly in Canva earlier today before filming this video. So I do use it sometimes, but not a whole, whole lot. Amazon Music I would think is pretty self-explanatory. Sometimes when I'm planning, I like to come in here and select a song or a playlist so it plays in the background. I've talked about Libby a lot before, but basically it is a reading app. And if you connect your library card to the Libby app, you'll be able to access free books that are within that library that you're a part of. So highly recommend looking into Libby if you haven't already. Holy Bible, also pretty self-explanatory. It has community stuff in here, Bible verses of the day. I pretty much reference this at church and I like it because I can just kind of come in here and copy or share or save it as an image, whatever selection I want to save as an image. And then I can take it into my GoodNotes app because I do have a church notebook where I keep notes of all things that are happening at church that day. Apple Store is pretty self-explanatory. Files app is pretty self-explanatory. Settings, self-explanatory. Now the difference between Safari and Google Chrome is that I don't really use Safari, but I kind of use it sometimes, but I mainly use Google Chrome. Normally when I'm doing work stuff, I try to use Google Chrome, but for personal things, I'll use Safari. I don't really know why there's really no difference. I use them literally the same way, but that's kind of how my brain works. Probably because I have all of my bookmarks for work and everything set up in Google Chrome. Therefore, it automatically will pop up on no matter what device I'm in or on as long as I'm signed into my Google account. So I do like that feature. And then I do have my Google Calendar here, which is also pretty self-explanatory and helps when I am planning all of the things. Just for reference, I do have all of these other apps in here, but I rarely access them. I don't text from here. I don't get on Instagram from here. I don't FaceTime from here. I don't get on Pinterest on here usually. Sometimes I do, but not really, but I pretty much don't use any of these apps. They're just on 
my iPad in the event that I need to use them, but I don't really access any of those apps, not YouTube, none of that, only these apps here on the screen. I don't have any notifications turned on on my iPad, so I cannot get notifications from any of these apps or anything like that. And it really helps with using the iPad for what I bought the iPad to use it for, which is planning and reading. So no notifications means no distractions. All right, let's get to the fun stuff and let's do some digital planning. So we can go into my planner shortcut or we can just go into good notes and we're going to go into good notes because I want to take you on a little tour of my good notes. We're in good notes now and I absolutely love good notes mainly because it syncs across my iPad and my phone. So anything I do on my iPad will automatically populate in the good notes app on my phone so i really really love that feature here is my phone and what it's doing right now is this updating these files and these folders because it's updating to what i last entered using my ipad so that's kind of what's happening right now in this very moment these two are syncing up so let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I have my 2023 budget planner, which I reference often, my 2023 personal planner, which I reference the most. I have this random section, which has old 2022 planners, some of the 2023 planners that I made for myself and that I'm not using. And then I also have this random folder, which basically has random information in it. I also have a sticker book, and I didn't show you this, but I recently went in and I, organize all of my different stickers. So I get free stickers from everywhere and I recently decided to take all of those stickers and organize them. So as an example, I made this Christmas page here and I added in all of the free Christmas stickers that I have in my possession. I also did the same thing for fall and I did the same thing for Halloween. And I did the same thing for literally everything else. So this is my sticker book. So I could talk about good notes and planning all day, but let's just go into my personal planner. This is my personal planner. This is May. I actually set up my personal planner, my monthly on camera. I did a May plan with me. And so what I wanna do now, since we're here, is just kind of walk through it and update it. So uh, one thing that's not happening is that, what's today? Today is the 15th and everything should be updated before the 15th. So we had Mother's Day, Day in the Life, okay, Celebrity Wedding Night, 15th, that's the same. This is gonna change, I'm not doing this video anymore. A date with Alika in a food tour Q&A 21st to 22nd so what I would do is I would actually split my screen I would come to Google Calendar and I would split my screen I'd probably turn it sideways so I can see it a little bit better but we're gonna leave it like this and I just kind of walk through my plans that I have in my Google Calendar which is the placeholder for all of my plans and then I would update it if I if there's anything that needs updated so I'm looking and the 21st has nothing here and this one doesn't either so we're good 22nd has that 23rd 24th 25th 26th 27th and 28th pick up yeah 29 it looks like something's okay we're good marky off 30 and 31. This is the week that we're in right now and we need to change this. So this is supposed to be the video that I'm putting out on Wednesday, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do what's on my iPad. What's on my, on my iPad and hopefully it fits and I don't have to adjust it. Of course it doesn't. So let's just adjust it a little bit. There we go. And then down here, we're going to change this one to um, it's kind of like a kind of like a money Q&A, but I think I'm going to answer it. So 
some other questions in it too, but primarily they're money questions. So we're gonna do money Q and A. All right, and let's see if everything is copacetic. So I recently made this weekly overview and I made three columns so I could separate work from personal from business, but I haven't really been doing that. So I don't have any work related events or meetings this week. Thank the good Lord. So we do not have to put anything over there. This is an event that we're supposed to go to today. These are my videos. I have a date with my friend coming up. Technically, I have a date with my husband coming up as well. I normally don't mark that because that's kind of like a no brainer. And then I have the video. So these are the workouts. Sometimes if I don't have any professional business related tasks outside of my regular stuff, which is just videos, I will put workouts over here in this section. I don't really know why, but I will do that. So like in theory, the what's in my iPad should be over here because this is the business column and the money Q&A should be over here. But I don't know, I kind of like how it looks <laughs> when I put all of the workouts over here. So down here, this is for my exercise goals. My goal is to exercise three to four times per week. And I normally try to get workouts done Monday through Thursday. And then I, my aim is potentially to work out on the weekends, but not feel bad about it if I don't, because I already put in four days. Social media, I plan to post on social media on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday of this week. So I'll check off this when I post this video that you're seeing now. I'll check off this when I post my Instagram reel because I attempt to post an Instagram reel every Friday or once per week. And then I'll check off this when I post the Saturday video. I have it on Sunday. That is because if I go on a date with my husband, it's probably if we do what we say we're gonna do and I have a date with my friend after work on Friday and a date with my husband Saturday, I'm probably not really gonna get around to publishing my video on Saturday which is what my hope is, but we'll have to see. This is my weekly tasks, and we do need to update this together for sure. What I like to do is I actually, at the beginning of the day or the end of the night, I like to just sit down and write out my to-do list. So I don't really plan ahead for the week a whole ton unless I absolutely know that there's something that I wanna get done on a specific day. But otherwise, if I don't know that ahead of time, if I don't know all of my tasks, I just plan all of my tasks on a day-to-day -day basis. This is my mood board that I've been working on. The issue is that I feel like, like I wanna delete that and replace it with a new photo. Um, I'm gonna delete that. That was my inspo photo, but I'm gonna delete that now. And we're gonna add in some new photos. That's kind of how we are looking. All right, now let's go to our summer vision board. If you haven't seen my summer vision board, this is my summer vision board. This is what I'm planning to do this summer with my life. My dog, niece, and husband are gonna have to kind of get in where they fit in because that's what your girl's gonna be up to. All right, and then that's my reading list. I'm currently reading Glucose Revolution, for which I plan to then move on to I'm Glad My Mom Died and then The Psychology of Money. And then here's my spring cleaning list and notes and some more notes and my upcoming plans, which I don't need to put new tires on there because I have new tires. And that is going to be it for my May calendar. Okay, so I am pretty sure we have covered everything in today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like, subscribe if you're new and if you're liking what you're seeing. And I will catch you guys right back here in a few days in a brand new video. Bye guys.